the fact that according to Ray Fittipaldo of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, it, Canada's already gone. There's it, it's it's been known within the locker room. He showed up on the fan the other day and said straight up. I mean, I listened to the full context, and obviously there's more that goes into this. But the big quote that everybody wanted to take away from it was, I fully expect a change to be made at the end of the season. The players know, the people inside the building already know. I think the biggest thing here is, what do they know? Do they know that he's already going to be fired? Do they know that he needs to be fired? Is there any respect left for a guy that is already halfway out the door? I just... I think there's a lot to dive in here, especially when you bring up the players who are supposed to look at this guy and kind of follow every every move that he makes. What, what were your thoughts when you saw that? Well, I think it would be really poor timing for the Steelers to kind of, I don't know. So like you said, there's a lot of added context that we don't know. Um, so whether it was some front office person t- saying to the the players, we're moving on from this guy at the end of the year, or it's Matt Canada kind of hinting at that himself. It's, I think, bad business to be in the middle of a playoff race and undermining undermining your your offensive coordinator like that. Whatever you think of Matt Matt Canada, it's you're not helping him out and you're not doing him any favors or making his job any easier by by letting stuff like this get out. You know, assuming that that you know it's actually true and that Matt Canada is actually kind of on his way out. I kind of, I do expect it to be true. It's Ray's like a guy that, you know, is usually pretty accurate, has some decent sources in there. But I agree with you. Like you're undermining your offensive coordinator. You're basically telling the team like, look, this guy isn't good enough for us. So even if we are making a push right now, like we don't really have much faith in what you guys can do under him, which is, I think, terrible, especially for a group that, you know, Mike Tomlin came running off the field the other day. And all, you see it all over Instagram, all over TikTok. It's him yelling, we grew up tonight. We grew up tonight. Right. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, they're finally clicking in a way where they could handle these big moments. And at the same time, they're somewhat told to say, okay, look, at we can't trust the guy that is calling these plays for us to, quote, unquote, grow up. And I, I just think that it, it, just like you said, it's very bad business. It's bad. It, it's a bad mindset to have for anybody in Pittsburgh. It's also somewhat of a shocking mindset to have in Pittsburgh I feel like the Steelers are so it does not matter we will not let these bad situations leave inside of our building and I'm okay with like the people in the building like the part the part of it where it's like oh the people in the front office know that he's already gone like they probably do they've probably known for a while now but the players like I just I'm, I'm a little lost on if that means like somebody told Najee Harris, Hey, Matt Canada is getting fired at the end of the year. Or if they just like are assuming like everybody in there knows, yeah, he stinks and he should be fired. I, I just, I don't know what way to go with that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, again, the timing is really weird. Like during the second half of the season where you've made a nice push and where you've, you found some stuff that works and it seems like the offense has found a bit of a, a bit of a rhythm this is the time where you're going to start like letting this stuff get out and letting, yeah, you know, letting rumors that your offensive coordinator is on the way out. That's, I don't know that that's weird. Kind of, that's just weird kind of communication strategy to me too. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, and I, I, you can speak a little bit better to this, but since you have been on the beat for, for longer, but it sort of seems like Matt Canada was a little bit, dead on arrival like it seemed like there was little faith in him when he arrived and that faith has only gotten more like the faith has only deteriorated as time has gone on i don't know if he was dead on arrival but he died he died relatively quickly like it wasn't yeah. it, there wasn't a lot of faith after like six weeks because mm-hmm. when he got here he was replacing randy feekner who people like if you think that nah, i don't know it'd be a close one it'd be very close to tell you who people despised more in Randy Feekner or Matt Canada, because both of them were just absolutely hated by the fan base because it was the same thing. It was a very slow, boring offense. And then Canada got here. And at the beginning, it was, okay, this guy's going to bring a new revived offense to the Steelers. He's going to bring co- somewhat of a college level, you know, a little bit more diversity, you know, something unique. And then it started off as pretty much the same offense that the Steelers ran the season before. 
and everybody at the beginning was saying, oh, this has got to be Ben Roethlisberger. It's Ben Roethlisberger's fault. It's Ben Roethlisberger's fault. It's Ben Roethlisberger's fault. He's got to retire. Then people started to realize like, okay, well, when Ben calls the plays, because he made that very known, you know, I'm drawing plays in the dirt. That's how we're winning games. Then people were like, oh, okay, this is Matt Canada's fault. He's the problem. And since then, it's it's only gotten worse. Um, so I don't know about dead on arrival, but it, it it was it was quick. He did not have a very good shelf life once he showed up in Pittsburgh. But I think that that's gotten like dramatically worse this season. I think that the fact that I think people are just so tired of it, of a very slow, you know, mediocre, not really getting anything going offense in the day of football where Andy Reid and Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan are making everybody and anybody work. You know, if Baker Mayfield could show up in L.A. and have great games three weeks in a row. You know, maybe that's not because of Baker Mayfield. Maybe that's because of Sean McVay. If Kyle Shanahan could make Mr. Irrelevant look really good, maybe that's Kyle Shanahan. Maybe that's not Brock Purdy, you know, and I think everybody wants to see that and is kind of getting tired of not seeing that. And Canada just kind of happened to be here when they when when that all that kind of went down. Did you did you have any sense in the last couple of weeks that maybe he was somewhat saving his job? with how good yeah. the team was playing. Yeah, it did. I mean, I, like, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't, I, I don't know. I didn't know how much his job needed saving. I thought it was pretty likely that they would stick with him. Like, at least through the end of the, you know, of course, through the end of the year. But, um, y- yeah, I, I feel like he was kind of doing himself a lot of favors and giving himself another shot at at this thing. Because, the, you know, I, we talked about this on our last episode, but they finally found – found out how to run the ball and that unlocked so much for them. Um, You alluded to the Tomlin thing about growing up, like this team is growing up. They're really young. Like not all of this was on Matt Canada and they've kind of been able to put together the, put together the beginnings of, of something, you know, there's something to grab onto and carry into next year now. And that just kind of made, that was the most striking thing about, you know, when you, when you sent, when I saw that um, report from Ray, it's just that, Man, this they some stuff was finally working, and now, yep. now we're we're coming out and we're we're undermining him like this. It was it was weird. It was it was definitely weird. But at the same time, like I think what what did it? I think what pushed everybody over the edge was the fact that the Steelers won. Like they won thirteen to ten against against the Raiders. It was awesome. People got to celebrate. You know, it doesn't matter how you win as long as you're winning. That's what we keep saying. But it definitely felt like a game where the Steelers could have scored 25 points and won that game relatively easily. And I think that they see that there's that potential there. You know, like I think that they see that Kenny Pickett is a good quarterback, that George Pickens is an absolute monster. Deontay Johnson is not as bad as people want him to be. Najee Harris is good. The offensive line is clicking. I think that there's so much Pat Fryermuth, obviously. I think there's so much going on in Pittsburgh's offense right now that even if they're young and just starting to grow, you score 13 points in a game. That's not enough. You know, you score 20 points in a game. I think they've only done it five times this year. That's not enough. You know, that's at that point, you're just looking at it going, no, we can't, we can't deal with this any longer. I don't think that they wanted it to hit the public as early as they did. But I also think that at this point, you know, like who who wasn't expecting that? Well, but the other thing is 20 points has been enough. Enough. It was enough to beat the Saints. It was 19 points yeah. was enough to beat the Falcons. 24 points was enough to beat the Colts. Like it has been enough up until this point. Like it, I don't know. Like they, there is something to like, you have to score more if you want, if this team wants to be any better and compete with those teams that they got blown out to like the, the bills and the Eagles, but they're not there yet. And that's like, I, this hasn't all been on Matt Canada. They are still really, no, really young. Not. And I don't know why, I think Matt Canada can be allowed to to grow with his offense. Um, I I don't think that's. I oh got him defending Matt Canada, but the, like I know, I know, but like he has it, it, like we can say thirteen points isn't enough, but it was enough. It was enough. It, it was enough because we knew that that was how this team was going to behave, and that's how they were going to win games was by leaning on the defense. I don't think anyone came into this year expecting. No, I don't 30. think so either. But I think that at this point in the season, 
that should have the offense should be able to help the defense more than they are. I think that right now, like you could you could remove the Baltimore game. I'm not going to count that one. And you could remove the Jets game. Not going to count that one either. But besides that, like, I don't know. There's a lot of losses out there that you just think like you couldn't score 20 points against the Patriots. Like you just could you couldn't do that. You know, you you couldn't score 20 points or 17 points against the Dolphins. You know, you you barely you scored 30 points against the Bengals, but like barely, you know, you shouldn't have done that one. And, and I get that the rest of them have been wins, but there's just I think that at this point, you know, there should be those 30 point games mixed in with 13 point games. You know, like you should have you should have a game where you win with somewhat ease to say like, oh, OK, you know, this there is some momentum here. This is this is actually starting to grow. And then you have those games where you rely on the defense. And I think it should, you know, it shouldn't, the defense should outweigh the offense, but it just doesn't feel like at any point the offense could go win a game if the defense like sucked. Like if it was a shootout, there are no shootouts in Pittsburgh. You can't, you can't have a shootout in Pittsburgh this season because if a team scores 25 points, you've lost. And I think that they kind of see that. And I, I want, I think they wanted to see that progress and it hasn't. Why don't, why don't they get credit for scoring? 30 points against the Bengals. Like why? I, I, I think that was like a, that, that was a garbage time touchdown. That was a, that was a garbage time touchdown. Okay. It was it about still as garbage counts. time as it was. About as garbage time. It was a, it's a one possession game. Like that's not, that's not garbage time Two two possessions. No, but it was a one possession time. game because they scored with like 15 seconds left or something. Yeah, That's like still, that. that's still competitive. That's like the game is still alive. That's not a, that's not garbage time. Garbage time is when you're up 20 or 30 or and the game is completely un, unreachable. That game was not unreachable. It didn't. I don't I, know. I would agree with that one. I it, I agree with that one. It wasn't unreachable, but it felt like it was unreachable. Like it felt oh, like well, I don't think George. Get, who cares about the how it felt like that was. It, but I it think that's how the players so felt. I think that the like George Pickens doesn't get kicked out of a game if he still feels like there's an opportunity to win. You know, he gets kicked out of a game because he just and then he said it. He was like, it does it didn't matter because we already like the game was already over. Well, so I think the players felt like it was wrong. over. Well, I think George Pickens is wrong. It doesn't really matter how he feels because it was still a one possession game with 15 in with 15 seconds with time on the clock. But that's how the and team the, felt. Like that's what I'm saying is like the team feels felt like that game was over. Even if even if it wasn't, the team already felt like it was over. And well, at that, that point, matter, like, that's a concern. Their because feelings don't make garbage time. Like the actual score and the time left creates garbage time. That's nobody's right, feelings so maybe, create. It's high. but still, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna push back on this even further. Like this offense was helping out the defense. They were running the ball more effectively. They were controlling the clock. Right. They were keeping them off of the field. Like there, there were tangible improvements, even if they were not showing up on the scoreboard. I would argue. I agree that there are tangible improvements i agree with that i think that the offense has progressed like uh, taken significant steps forward it's never too early to play holiday music and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts whether it's for a friend or the friend in your pants you could make this a season to be jolly with manscaped do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, All I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about a sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and using our code STEALERS20 for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It is everything needed to help you deck the halls from face to balls just in time for mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each of the products from the best-selling Performance Package, plus Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, and Ultra Premium Deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin-safe technology to protect your delicate presence. Plus, both are waterproof, so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway. There's also a 4,000K LED light on it, so you can light the way just like Rudolph. Now that you've groomed your candy cane, it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum Package shower products. 
All of Manscaped shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling fresh doesn't stop in the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve stank problems all day long. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. The Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new body buffer, an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and is a lot cleaner than that old loofah. Get 20% off and free shipping with our code STEALERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. All you have to do is use our code STEALERS20. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. Has it been enough? Like, like, is it enough? Like, if, okay, so let me ask this. If, you, if you're Omar Khan and you're heading into this offseason, you're telling me that you're feeling you're bringing Matt Canada back for another season. I never said that. It, it depends on who else is like if Cliff Kingsbury gets fired, maybe not. Like y- y- you have to look at your other options. Um, but I don't know. We don't have to pretend like there's been no improvement. And I, like, I, I don't know. I don't want to defend Matt Canada, but I don't want to pretend like he's been terrible all season long. And like, I don't know, to, like to this point about it being enough, they've won they're one, two, they're five and they're five and two after the bye. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That is enough for how this like it clearly has been enough for how this team is built and who they played. Scoring however many points. I can't do the math off the top of my head, but scoring however many points they have over these over this second half of the season has been enough to help them turn things around and get back in the playoff hunt. It, it has. I you agree can't, with that. I can't I can't disagree with that. I do agree with that. Now I'm, Am I still bringing Matt Canada back? No, not a chance, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I agree. Like, I can't disagree that there hasn't been growth because you've seen the growth. I just think that it also at the same time makes sense if they're already thinking they have to move on from Matt Canada. Do, do I think they should have let that out? No, not a chance, but mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't, it, it, at this point, and we're going to dive into this next, like there's already names on the market that I've talked about and will talk about that I would hire over. Matt Canada. I'd hire, you know, I'd go, I'd go take a shot on somebody before I brought back Matt Canada, just because I just, I like, I don't, I just think that in the NFL nowadays, there's, you see significant changes, like almost immediately with like really good offensive team. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, look at Sean McVay showed up in LA and they immediately became good. Even with Jared Goff, they immediately became good. Um, Arizona hey, shows up, or Cliff Kingsbury oh. shows up, and before Kyler Murray ruined that team, they were good. Like they, I mean, they weren't great, but they had a good offense. They had a good offensive system. Kyle Shanahan shows up in San Francisco, takes him to the Super Bowl in year one. You know, and before that, he took Atlanta to the Super Bowl, didn't win it, but they still scored twenty eight points and a half. That's pretty impressive for an offense. Like these were all these were all teams that were much more talented than the Steelers are talented and experienced than the Steelers are on offense right now. I mean, yes and no. I don't think that LA was with I'm not Cooper gonna say LA was who else was on that, that Rams team that went to that Super Bowl? Nobody the Cooper Cooper Cup and Todd Woods. Todd Gurley won like MVP, not MVP, but didn't he win? The oh, Todd Gurley was on that team. Todd Gurley yeah, was. Yeah, when on he that actually team. when he before his arthritis or whatever. Th- these were. Yeah. I don't know. You can, you can like I don't want to take anything away from Kyle Shanahan and and Sean McVay and all those guys, but they had a lot more to work with, and they weren't working with guys who were the vast majority of them rookies or second or third year guys. As their as their primary playmakers. Okay, so if you brought back Matt Canada next season, do you would your expectations be that this offense takes like a significant jump forward? Yeah, of course, of course. Like, yeah, everyone's getting a year older. He's got one more year of he's got one more year of experience underneath him. Yeah, like no, that's absolutely a reasonable expectation. I I don't want to like. I don't want to I don't want anyone to misconstrue this and like think I think I'm saying Matt Canada is perfect, but he's not. No, no, he's not as at fault for everything that is wrong with this team as I think we sometimes 
and, and I've been guilty of like treating him this way too, but like he is not as guilty of guilty for all the all the faults in this team as as we've maybe treated him like he was. I look at I agree. I'm not trying to say that Matt Canada is the worst offensive coordinator in football. I just I just I don't know. Like I think Kenny's playing good enough, and I think this offense is playing good enough where yeah, they might be very young, but I think that they should just show flashes of being dangerous and they don't show any flashes of being dangerous. And that's what concerns me is, is the lack of the lack of splash anywhere, anywhere at all. Um, but I agree. Like, I can't disagree with you um, on the fact that Matt Canada might actually be improving and maybe worth another shot. If I was, if I was to make the decision, I would fire him. That being said, if you were in the position and you didn't fire him, you I would understand your argument not to, and I'd agree with it. 